Barnaby Joyce offers to resign after leaked text messages show he called the Prime Minister a liar and a hypocrite. The fallout from Justin Langer's departure continues. Cricket Australia laments his refusal to accept a short-term contract. Firefighters battle an out-of-control blaze in southeast WA, with fears properties have already been lost. And a dream run, Australian Tess Cody qualifies for the snowboard slopestyle finals in Beijing. Hello and welcome to ABC News, I'm Meredith Sheehan. The Deputy Prime Minister has offered his resignation to Scott Morrison after an explosive text message he sent labelling the Prime Minister as a liar and a hy hypocrite was made public. The federal opposition argues there's no way Barnaby Joyce can remain on Mr Morrison's front bench given his scathing character assessment. In politics, sorry is often the hardest word. I like to start and unreservedly apologise to the Prime Minister. A private text message suggesting strain between the coalition partners. I should never have written the text. Rarely shy about expressing his opinion, then backbench MP Barnaby Joyce tapped out the message in March 2021. <laughs> Shortly after former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins went public with her allegation a colleague had raped her in a ministerial office. If it can happen in Parliament House, it can truly happen anywhere. Mr Joyce sent the message to an intermediary, asking them to share his sentiments. Tell Brittany Higgins, he wrote, I and Scott, he is Scott to me until I have to recognise his office, don't get along. He's a hypocrite and a liar from my observations and that's over a long time. I have never trusted him and I dislike how he earnestly rearranges the truth to a lie. Your views from the backbench are based on assumption and commentary, not on one-on-one -on -one relationship. Hang on a second here. Federal opposition not buying the argument Mr Joyce has changed his views after returning to the front bench. That was after Barnaby Joyce had served in the Cabinet for over half a decade alongside Scott Morrison. Ms Higgins shared the message with the media after Mr Joyce demanded the author of texts labelling the Prime Minister it was a fraud and, quote, a complete psycho. Reveal their identity. But on the text he wrote... I offered my resignation and he did not accept my resignation. Scott Morrison insists he's accepted the apology, arguing Mr Joyce was in a different headspace last year. The Prime Minister saying that relationships change over time and while he'd never been close to the Nationals leader before, it's fair to say they've both surprised each other since he became Deputy Prime Minister. It's not the first time Mr Morrison's honesty has been questioned by a political leader. Do you think he lied to you? I don't think. I know prompting a stern response. You can't just go around calling people liars. Even with the Prime Minister and his deputy trying to downplay this incident, dismissing it as political soap opera, there's no denying this is messy, particularly with Federal Parliament returning on Tuesday. Matthew Doran, ABC News, Canberra. Justin Langer has resigned as head coach of Australia's men's cricket team less than a month after a dominant win in the Ashes series. There's been speculation about Langer's job security since reports of player unrest emerged last year, with senior squad members unwilling to publicly endorse him to stay on. Cricket Australia says it offered Langer a one-off short-term extension, which he rejected. Justin Langer touched down in Perth today, now the former Australia men's coach. Justin, welcome home, mate. How are you feeling? Despite months of speculation and an eight-hour board meeting yesterday, Cricket Australia was caught off guard by the timing and manner of the announcement. It came this morning via a social media post from his management company. Cricket Australia had offered Langer a six-month contract extension, which he refused. We've looked at uh, future needs uh, we've um, consulted broadly um, and we feel that um, you know, the team has evolved and, and it is now the time to start a, a period of transition. Langer stepped into the coaching role after the 2018 ball tampering scandal in South Africa and led the side to 15 wins from 27 tests in charge. That included a 4-0 victory in the recent Ashes series, which came on the heels of an inaugural men's T20 World Cup title last November. But talk of player dissatisfaction with Langer's coaching style had become increasingly loud. Again, I know you won't agree, but I think they feel that they want just a little bit more positivity. Yeah, just a slightly more positive message around the batting times. 
We're still being honest. Yeah, well, I can't do anything else. And this week, the current captain pointedly refused to back his re-signing. Well, that's Cricket Australia's um, job. It's not my job. Um, I've really loved my time working with Gail. Langer's former Australian teammates feel he's been let down. The whole thing just reeks of being orchestrated. We're from the, basically the moment that all of this garbage started coming out, you know, in the middle of winter last year. I think it's a, a really sad day as far as Australian cricket's concerned. And, and if you look back, it's been a really poor six months, I think, of the way that the Cricket Australia as a whole have handled um, some of the better people in Australian cricket. Lang has already been linked to the England coaching position, which has been vacated by Chris Silverwood. It was here at the WACA ground that Justin Langer cut his teeth, guiding the Perth Scorchers to three Big Bash League titles before going on to the Australia job. And his former employer hasn't held back in criticising Cricket Australia. We spent a lot of time talking about people and how important people are, and I think this is a disgraceful way to treat one of the greatest cricketers that's ever represented Australia. Andrew McDonald has been appointed as Australia's interim head coach. Andrew's job right at the moment is, is to do nothing, basically. Um, you know, the team's beginning to hum along pretty well. Um, they've got a tour to Pakistan coming up. That tour begins in just four weeks. Tom Wilde, ABC News. Residents in Denmark on WA's south coast are on edge as a major bushfire continues to move closer. Unusual weather is fueling the blaze near Denmark with evacuated residents fearing their homes have been lost. After a long night, fire crews battling a blaze near Denmark were hoping for some relief today. But that didn't arrive with what's been dubbed unusual weather, including near record temperatures and gusty winds hampering efforts. At the moment the fire is still uncontained and uncontrolled. Um, we have crews um, working on putting in containment lines, uh, also tankers and aircraft uh, working uh, at the moment uh, on all parts of the fire. Some residents were forced to flee last night as the incident area expanded. Some don't know if they have a home to return to. The concern is now that it might be lost because the power's gone out and there's, there's no pressure, water pressure, so you can't really rely upon saving the house. So they, did, they said that they did everything last night and it was OK standing last night and this morning, but with the change of wind now, we were warned that that could change with it coming back on itself. Catastrophic conditions, strong winds um, and hilly terrain. So we are um, encountering a number of issues at the moment. So far, the fire has torn through more than 2,500 hectares, stretching from the coast to forest inland, just to the west of the popular tourist town. At a town hall meeting today, fire authorities said an assessment of property damage was underway. Our rapid uh, damage assessment teams on the fire ground, um, and they will be looking at uh, uh, any impacts uh, across the fire and then that will, uh, will be assessed, but I can't verify that at this stage. Some residents stayed to protect their properties, including residents at the Wallery community close to where the fire began. Half a dozen people in my community, they stayed back and trying to protect all the houses. We are surrounded by forest. The fire sounds like where I live is so close, within a few metres. The cause of the fire is unknown. A trough and cold front forecast for tomorrow has Denmark on edge, but could also bring a chance of rain. Tom Wildey, ABC News. Thousands of people have started arriving in Western Australia after travel exemptions were eased. But on the day the state's hard border was supposed to fall, many people still don't qualify for the exemptions and remain separated from loved ones. Overwhelming emotion for reunited families as the first flights landed in Perth under the state's expanded travel exemptions. Some had been apart for more than two years. It's just been a wild ride and, and I just miss my parents so much and it's so good to be back at home. Vaccinated people travelling from interstate on compassionate grounds, returning home or visiting direct family can now enter WA, but must still quarantine for 14 days. More than 10,000 people are due to arrive this weekend. I'm just uh, completely overwhelmed and uh, full of uh, joy, excitement. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the best. That's the latest from ABC News. I'm Meredith Sheehan. Thanks for watching.